In this lesson, we are going to solve one programming interview question. And the question is, given a two-dimensional array of integers, we want to traverse and print the elements in the array in spiral order. For example, if we have a 2D array like this, let's call this input array. We have four rows and four columns here. Our input array may have any number of rows and any number of columns. And now let's say we want to traverse this array in spiral order in clockwise direction. So what we will do is we will start at 2 and first traverse the top row. We will go like 2, 4, 6, 8. So we will go right and then we will go down along the rightmost column. And then we will again go left along the bottommost row and we will traverse the array something like this. And as output, we have to print all the elements in the array as we traverse it in spiral order. So let's say we want to pr print a comma separated list of elements. So our list will be something like 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, 9, 8, 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, 9, 12, 5, and 11. So how do we approach this problem? There are some straightforward observations. The first observation is that we can have four possible directions while traversing the array. We can go along a row from left to right or we can go along a column from top to bottom. Let's call this direction down. Or we can go along a row from right to left. Let's call this direction left. Or we can go along a column from top to bottom. Let's call this direction up. We will go on changing directions in a cyclic manner. From right we will go down, down to left, left to up, and from up again to right. And we will not go in a row or column twice. So once we are done with a row or column, we will not go to that row or column again. We can perceive this problem something like this. First, we will print the top row from left to right. And now we do not need to come back to this row again. Now let's say we will keep on reducing the array as we traverse a row or column so that the array that remains to be traversed is there and that which is traversed is not there. So first we will traverse the top row and then we will change our direction and traverse the rightmost column. And once we are done with the rightmost column, we will traverse the bottommost row and then we will go to the leftmost column. And once again, we will go to the topmost row, whatever is the topmost after all this removal of rows and columns. Once again, we will go to rightmost column. This time we have only one element in the column. And once again, we will go to bottommost row. This is what we will be left with after all the peeling off. Let us now implement this logic of peeling off a row or column once we are done traversing it. We do not actually need to delete elements from the array to achieve this. What we can do is we can mark the boundaries of the untraversed array using some variables. So what I'm going to take do is I'm going to take four variables. One to mark the topmost row of the untraversed array. Another to mark the bottommost row of the untraversed array. One to mark the leftmost column of the untraversed array. And another to mark the rightmost column of the untraversed array. I'm calling these variables T, B, L and R respectively. I will also write the pseudo code here. Let's say we want to write a function named print spiral that will take a two dimensional array A and two more, more arguments, the number of rows and number of columns in the array. Let's say M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. What we are doing here is initially we are defining four variables. T uh, that will be initially set as zero. B that will be initially set as M minus one, that will be the index for the bottom most row. I'm short of space here, so I'm writing multiple statements in the same line. Uh, we will have L, that will again be zero initially, and R will be N minus one initially. Now I'll define one more variable named DIR for direction. And initially, it will be set as zero. Uh, let's say if DIR is zero, we mean the right direction. If it is one, we mean the direction top to bottom, two means right to left, left, and three, by three we will mean bottom to top. Initially we want to go from left to right, so initially DIR is zero. These four variables at any point will mark the boundary of the untraversed part of the array. That will be a subarray. 
Now we will say something like this. While T is less than or equal to B and L is less than or equal to R and and this condition should be true for the untraversed subarray to be valid. I'll come back to this particular condition why it is important. Now depending upon the value of TIR we will have four cases in traversal. If uh, direction or this variable DIR is equal to zero then we need to traverse the topmost row of the untraversed array from left to right and to traverse the topmost row our, our row number will be the same only the column index will vary so we will say for I L to R print A T I for the row marked by variable T we will go from leftmost column to rightmost column and print all the elements and once we are done printing this row we need to discard that row so we will set the new top we will now say T plus plus so here in this example initially uh, direction is 0 and top is T is 0 so what we will do is uh, left is also 0 we will go like this we will keep on printing these elements and once we are done printing the row we will increment T so T will now become 1 and then we also need to change direction so we can say something like now direction should be 1 now we should go from top to bottom along the rightmost column of the untraversed array so we will say that if direction is equal to 1 uh, we will print the rightmost column this time the column index will not change only the uh, row index will change so we will say for i t to b for all rows from top to bottom print a i r in this example here we will go something like this this is the topmost row r will remain the same from top to bottom we will print all these elements and once we are done we will decrement r now we will say r minus minus so this will be our new r and we will change the direction again now our direction will be 2 from 1 we will go to 2 now when direction is 2 that means we want to go along the bottom most row from right to left so we will say something like this uh, I will start at R and we will decrement I down to L and we will print A B I the row index will not change and now we will decrement B now remember the index increases here from top to bottom and we are going from bottom to top towards the top and direction will now be 3 so we have traversed this part uh, we will go in this order 1 2 and then 3 and finally we will have one more condition when we will want to go from bottom to top along the leftmost column direction will be equal to 3 this may look messed up because I'm really short of space here and this time we will iterate from B down to T and print A I L and then we will increment L and set the direction as 0 again so L will now be incremented in this example this will be, be the end of our while loop and also the end of our function uh, only one of these conditions in the while loop will be executed in one go that will mean traversing in one direction redefining the boundaries and changing the direction for this example at this stage direction is uh, 0 so we can go from left to right in the topmost row so we will go like this t will now be incremented it will become equal to b and now direction is 1 we will come to this while condition we will check this condition this is true t is less than or equal to b and l is less than or equal to r now direction is 1 so we need to print the rightmost column and we need to decrement r and now direction becomes 2 so we need to print the bottom most row and we need to decrement B okay at this stage this condition in the while loop will become false so we will exit if you will try to think this condition will become false only when we will be done printing all the elements this is how our while loop will look in real code remember our indices are increasing from left to right so this is 0th column 1th column 2th column and 3th column and similarly from top to bottom we are going like 0 1 2 3 and this is what we had written previously in the pseudo code except that we are changing direction by this statement we are not changing direction inside the loops 
So if direction is 0 initially, it will go on increasing like 0, 1, 2, 3. And once it becomes 4, we are taking a modulo by 4, so it will become 0 again. Give this some thought and you'll get it. So this was printing a 2D array in spiral order. Thanks for watching.